I'm prepared to share a few thoughts today on virtual oncology, which I believe is the, really the frontier of uh, digital health right now. Um, and I wanna start off by explaining why I think that's the case. There we go. According to the National Business Group on Health, in their most recent survey of, of large employers, cancer just outpaced musculoskeletal disease as the leading driver of medical costs for self-insured employers, followed by musculoskeletal disease, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, high-risk maternity, and then mental health. However, despite being the leading cost driver for these self-insured employers who are the largest payer of healthcare in the United States, late stage investment in digital health solutions, particularly those for um, employees and dependents of these employers, lags far behind all other disease categories. So if you look at every other disease category, musculoskeletal disease, cardiovascular, diabetes, high-risk maternity, and mental health, and look at companies that have received Series C funding, everyone has at least one company, most of, most of whom received that funding in 2015, 2020, and as recently as 2021. But today, there's not a, there's not a single company in the oncology space that has achieved this, this milestone of, of financial investment. Where there's a gap, there's often an opportunity. So recently, a lot of smart people have started companies and invested companies to fill that gap and, and uh, address the, 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 the digital health gap in the health benefits space uh, for, on, for oncology. So Time Care uh, in 2021 received a Series A investment led by Andreessen Horowitz. Jasper, 25 million round in, C in, in 2022, led by General Catalyst. A company named Vine Health received $5 million in investment to expand from the UK into the US. And just in the past few weeks, Carum Health announced a $45 million Series B to expand their solution into the, into the oncology space. So there's a tremendous amount of activity right now happening in the virtual oncology, in the virtual oncology sphere. Although the, the playing field's becoming increasingly competitive, all of these organizations are ultimately focused on the same end goal, and that is to improve outcomes in cancer. When you look at risk-adjusted survival over a five-year period, you see the outcomes really vary tremendously. This is based off of a methodology that Memorial Sloan Kettering uh, published in JAMA Oncology uh, in 2015. And what you can see here is that five-year survival varies significantly depending on the location in which a patient receives their cancer treatment. So you see four lines here. One line is for treatment in community hospital settings. Above that is treatment in academic medical centers. There are far fewer of those. The green line is treatment at National Cancer um, Institute comprehensive cancer centers. There's only about 45 or so in the entire country. And then this top line here is the five-year survival um, at Memorial Stone Kettering. And you can see there's a nearly a 30% increase in survival between comprehensive, sorry, between community hospitals and leading cancer centers like Memorial Stone Kettering. Now, the, the, the real challenge is 74% of all individuals in the country are receiving their cancer diagnosis and treatment in the locations that have the, the lowest overall survival. This is a challenge that we've been particularly focused on at Memorial Stone Kettering, 
with uh, the initiative that I've worked on over the past several years called MSK Direct. So MSK Direct seeks to address the total burden of, of cancer and ta tackle that, that challenge of varying um, outcomes by expanding access to top quality expertise and comprehensive support in cancer diagnosis, treatment and prevention, and to do that for not just individuals who are fortunate enough to be treated at Memorial Sloan Kettering, but to do that, to provide that access to patients everywhere. That requires the use of digital health and, and virtual solutions. Since, since its inception uh, in 2016, we've secured partnerships with over 200 self-insured employers and local unions. Uh, collectively, these organizations cover almost 7 million lives, employees and dependents, and, and we've supported over 13,000 patients. The, the way that we address that challenge of varying outcomes through two key services. The first being expert medical opinions. So with an expert medical opinion, this is a service that's available to patients anywhere in the country. We get their pathology tissue and their diagnostic images sent to Memorial Sloan Kettering and our pathologists and radiologists will review those materials ensure that patient has the most accurate diagnosis. Then a, an oncologist from Memorial Sloan Kettering that's subspecialized in, a, in that patient's disease will review the diagnostic reports, review all the outside medical records, and develop a written care plan, which gets shared with the patient and with the patient's local treating oncologist. If the local oncologist has questions, they're able to communicate and collaborate with the, the doctors at Memorial Stone Kettering. The second service is around care navigation. We have a team of oncology certified nurse navigators and they will guide members to um, the highest quality centers of excellence that are available locally and in, in network with, with their insurance. Simply getting more members to the, the right um, and most appropriate treatment setting, setting um, can significantly improve outcomes. I wanna talk for a moment about the value of those expert medical opinions. Uh, a recent study uh, by my colleagues, um, Allison uh, Lippitt-Snyderman and, and Ben Roman at Memorial Sloan Kettering, um, it was published in Cancer Medicine uh, earlier this year, found that one in three people receiving an expert medical opinion received a meaningful change in their treatment that improved either their quality of life or their survival. Uh, one in five individuals um, had their cancer treatments de-escalated to reduce um, surgery to avoid unnecessary surgeries. And, and surprisingly, one in 10 uh, had their treatment plans de-escalated to the point where there was actually no treatment recommended. Instead, they were um, put on an active surveillance and monitoring protocol. So th those are all statistics, but I want to, um, I, I want to highlight what this means for, uh, for a real person. This is a very recent example from earlier this year of a 62-year-old year man living in Virginia. He was given by his local doctor in, in Virginia a devastating diagnosis. He was told he had stage four high-grade bladder cancer that had metastasized to his spine and lung. That's, that's a terminal diagnosis. Um, he had MSK Direct as a benefit through his employer and was able to get an expert medical opinion. Our, our doctors at Memorial Stone Kettering reviewed the pathology and radiology images, and they determined that the bladder cancer was actually low grade, so not high grade, and that those spine and lung lesions were actually benign. So this patient did not have metastatic bladder cancer. In fact, 
this low-grade non-metastatic can bladder cancer uh, is best treated, not with chemotherapy that the, the patient had been originally recommended by his local doctor, but, but simply with active surveillance. So, so just, just think about that for a moment. This, this individual was told by his local doctor he had a terminal illness, needed chemotherapy to buy himself a few months, and through this solution, this, this virtual solution, learned that his life expectancy was not measured in months, but years, potentially decades, and didn't even need treatment. So just a, a profound example of the impact a, a digital solution like this can have on someone's life. Now, our expert medical opinions go a long way at uh, improving outcomes, but they're alone insufficient. Uh, too many patients have inadequate or insufficient psychosocial support. The, the support that an oncologist and their care team can provide to a patient living with cancer is not sufficient in and of itself. Some patients need social workers. They need they might need nutritional support. They might need financial counseling and guidance or support with exercise and transportation. A second challenge is that cancer is an overwhelming diagnosis that's extremely difficult to, or, to coordinate and to manage. We have incredible digital tools that'll help us with financial management, to managing our personal finances. We have digital tools that will help us plan and coordinate a vacation with our friends and family. But when it comes to a cancer diagnosis, we leave patients with a clipboard and fax machines. Rather than try and tackle these two challenges entirely on our own, we partnered with one of those digital health companies that recently received investment, Jasper Health. And on Monday, Three days ago, um, let me go back. On Monday, we uh, launched a new application, the MSK Direct application. Here are a few screenshots from that, that application. It allows a centralized place for an, or, for an individual facing a cancer diagnosis or their family members and caregivers to track symptoms, medications, mood, to keep track of all action items and to-do lists monitor their appointments, stay on top of medications, and get personalized recommendations. There's a content library, also a simple way to access that expert medical solution that, that I spoke about previously. So this application and our partnership with Jasper Health allows us to provide comprehensive support across the entire cancer journey. We have care tracking and coordination tools. So these allow members to track appointments, medication, symptoms to do, mood, activity, and more. They can also sync that information and coordinate tasks with their caregivers and family members. You know, cancer is a family diagnosis, and having all this information in one place makes coordination amongst that family simpler and, and easier. Um, users receive personalized and timely recommend recommendations that are based off of the information that they've provided us. These could be things recommend recommendations to do things like receive an expert medical opinion, review, re read an article or piece of content, or tap into resources that are available locally. We also connect members with a comprehensive support team. So through the application, members can chat or speak with uh, a team of cancer coaches who have expertise in nursing, social work, nutrition, financial counseling, and exercise therapy. That team's available 24 seven to support these members. And again, the application provides a simpler, more digitally enabled way to access those expert medical opinions that I spoke about previously. So I'm, I'm incredibly excited about these new capabilities and about uh, not just from MSK Direct, but from all of the um, activity that's going on in the digital health space. But there, 
entirely inadequate without there also being better treatments and better diagnostic capabilities. Fortunately, we're experiencing what I've heard many of um, my physician colleagues at Memorial Sloan Kettering refer to as a, a renaissance happening within, within cancer care. Uh, immunotherapies, for example, which harness the power of someone's immune system to, 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 treat, ter, to treat cancer, and precision therapies, which are targeting specific mutations in an individual's uh, cancer cells, are treating diseases that were once thought, um, once, once considered untreatable, oftentimes with minimal, uh, with minimal side effects, it's contributing to, to, to much better treatments. We also have better diagnostics. Uh, molecular diagnostics allow us to sequence an individual's tumor and understand what specific mutations are, 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 are driving that mutation. There are also companies like um, Grail who have a multi-cancer early detection blood test, which, can, which, which have the potential to detect up to 50 different types of cancer from a, from a blood draw. Uh, most, the vast majority of which have no, um, that there are no screenings for. So my hope for digital health in the oncology space is that it will move from being an exception to the norm and that the full power of digital health will be unleashed to make these better treatments and these better diagnostic capabilities that are, that are being put into practice now, uh, more accessible, more convenient, and will result in a better experience for everyone facing a cancer diagnosis. Thank you.